Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the Orlando Magic HQ podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic HQ podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network and Bet Online. We're your hosts, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, October 25th, and the Magic just got done laying the smack it down on the Miami Heat, man. Orlando Magic basketball season is back in action. The Magic are undefeated. I'm excited, bro, and you, you must be super excited because... Uh, while us little people were watching this game from the comforts of our own home or at a <laughs> Magic Watch Party locally here in Orlando, you were watching it live and in action in Miami, bro. So talk to me, man. How are you feeling after game one? Uh, how was the experience being in Miami behind enemy lines uh, representing Orlando and the Magic um, against our, our in-state rivals? Dude, it was the best decision I made. So I thought about going, like, should I do it? Should I not? Um, pulled the trigger about a month ago and buying the tickets. And I'm glad that I did, man. It was a memorable opening night for us. Spanking the Miami Heat on their home floor on Pat Riley night. Um, it could not have been better. It was a great turn. Now, the first half was kind of shaky a little bit. Uh, but that third quarter, man, once Jalen Suggs came back in the game, um, the Magic fans, I got to say this, man. The Magic fans that showed up to that game, props to you guys. I met a bunch of you guys at halftime. Um, the noise you guys were making, you know, the the chants, let's go Magic. Um, MVP for Paolo, play the song late in the fourth quarter. It was a blast, man. So those of you guys that made it to the arena, big shout out to all of you. Um, but again, man, I know we'll talk about it more in detail later on in the episode, but a great experience. Uh, glad that, I, that again, so many of us made the choice to go. I saw people on Twitter that were leaving work early to make it down there. Um, so, again, props to all, all of you guys that, that took make the drive, made the effort to be there. We witnessed uh, a great opening night for sure. Yeah, it was dope, man. I was able to hear the chants through my TV speakers, and it felt good for a change, uh, being able to hear our team's presence at an away game especially against the Miami Heat, man, because we know that, one, uh, their fan base is a is a super shaky fan base. Their fan base is set up exactly like their roster. Um, they are super, <laughs> super shaky. Uh, the minute that, you know, we were seeing people leave, and we'll, we'll, we're going to jump more into details of, of the game in just a moment, but it was fun seeing the fan base leave, you know, midway through the third quarter. And I have a buddy of mine that, you know, he's a diehard Miami Heat fan, and, you know, it felt good to be able to rub that one in a little bit, especially on Pat Riley night. You know, that's that to me spoiling that court, tainting that court uh, on on its first, you know, uh, announcement. Uh, the first time that to play on that court with Pat Riley's name on it and just kind of smearing it. And he has to hold on to that for like the rest of his life. I I I, I love it. I love it. It, it. it brought brought a lot of joy to me, man. I, I was super hyped it. yesterday. Um, you know, watching that game felt like uh, it felt like a playoff game. It, it really did. It had a it had a uh, an extra level, an extra layer of excitement. So in today's episode, we we're going to touch more on you know the the game against the Miami Heat and kind of put our, our our thoughts and some of the things we liked and didn't like. Um, we're going to talk about Jalen Suggs, my boy, finally getting his contract extension and will be uh, in Orlando for the foreseeable future. Um, and then there was some some leaks from uh, I, we, we were able to see the actual image of what um, our court will be looking like for the end season tournament, um, which is is pretty cool. Um, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about some some other things that popped up. But before we get into it. Quick word from our sponsors. Uh, basketball fans, it's that time of the year again. The NBA is back from opening tip off to buzzer beaters. Bet Online has you covered with the best odds, the biggest promotions, and live in game betting on all your favorite team. This season, every game matters. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, breakdown, and live odds to bet on during the game. It's not just NBA, Bet Online has odds on everything from football baseball, playoffs, NHL, to even political props. 
Head to the website today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online. The game starts here. Also, don't forget to catch our boy Brandon Kravitz on In The Zone five days a week talking about all the hottest sports topics in Orlando and beyond. Live on 96.9 The Game and iHeartRadio. Also, if you're looking for more Magic coverage outside of the Orlando Magic HQ, Brandon will be hosting an extension of his show on game days. It's In The Zone Game Day Magic from 6 to 6.30 p.m. every weekday that the Magic play a game. And if that's not enough, catch bonus content and exclusive interviews about the magic, sports betting, fantasy, and more on the Zone Heads podcast. Download and subscribe wherever you are listening to us. Now, jumping into this game because we, we have a lot to say. The Orlando Magic take down the Miami Heat in Miami that we haven't done. I, I don't remember the exact date, but it's it's been a little while since we beat uh, the Miami Heat in Miami. Um, we get that opening night win against Miami. We we got to get a chance to kind of see what the rotations look like. Um, we saw some things that we liked, some things that we didn't like. But let's let's just start off with you know talking about the rotation. Um, so we we got a we got a glance to be able to see uh, some of the adjustments that Coach Moses made from last season. So start off out. Talk to me. What what are some of the things that stood out from the rotation for you? So I think something that we we were wondering, it was, you know, who's going to be, you know, the guards off the bench, who's going to come in first, um, who's going to get minutes between Gary Harris, Jeff Howard, and man, I think all Magic fans today probably woke up and had to apologize to Gary Harris, because this guy came in, and he was a sniper from three-point range. He ended up hitting three, uh, six three-pointers last night, crucial uh, three-pointers in the first half to keep us in the game. And then some additional threes in the second half as well. So big, big night for Gary Harris. So he seems to be locking in that off the bench, kind of backing up um, KCP or what we want to see. It could be Franz as well, but he's doing a great job so far. Even preseason, he did a great job um, hitting shots, playing a role that in my mind fits a, fits him better uh, than, than it did being a starter last year. Um, so Gary Harris for sure. Again, seems like he's a lock in, in that role at the moment. Did a terrific job last night. The next one was A.B. A.B. was a guy that, again, we keep hearing about how well he was doing in preseason, um, in training camp. And, man, we saw it last night once again. So Jalen Suggs picked up some early fouls in the game, barely played in the first half. We did not miss a beat. A.B. was there. He did a great job. He had control, setting up the offense, playing solid defense. Um, so in my mind, those were the two big things for me in the rotation last night. Just the amount of playing time that AB got. He needed two last night because Jalen Sucks was in foul trouble. But then the impact that Gary Harris had in the game. So those were the big two ones for me that come to mind right now. What about you? Was there anything that stood out to you with the rotation? Yeah, so I, I was super, it, it, exactly like you said, man. I was super impressed with Gary Harris, um, especially, you know, KCP so far and and obviously not something to really worry about but he struggled in the preseason um and unfortunately it kind of trickled over in into the regular season had a really off shooting night uh zero for five from three um so to be able to see gary harris kind of pick up the slack from you know a shooting perspective makes me feel really good right from the sense of all right we took gary harris out of the starting lineup he's now on the bench and Gary Harris defensively, defensively did a really good job um, on the defensive end, guarding against the Miami Heat. So that that was really fun to watch. Um, it, you know, on, on days, people are going to have shooting slump. So on a day that, you know, uh, KCP, obviously his shooting wasn't there. The fact that Gary Harris went ballistic from behind three-point line shooting, you know, six for nine, was really, really good to see, man. Uh, Gary Harris was shooting... Uh, what we were expecting KCP to shoot. Like Gary Harris was playing like KCP. Um, so just imagine what it's going to look like on the days that both of them have their their shot going. And I, I really like seeing Anthony Black uh, be a definitive member of that second unit. Um, you know, he's somebody that I'm expecting uh, for him to kind of take it up a level. And, you know, we've been talk we've been hearing the players talk about him, you know, so far throughout the whole training camp about, you know, how much of a, a leader he's, um, the leadership skills that he's shown and, and kind of really, you know, honing in on that point guard position and and being 
you know, talkative and, and kind of being that floor general that we desperately need. Um, man, he, he was, he was doing so many good things, man, getting everyone involved. And once he started getting everyone involved, that opened up so much for him to be able to be a little more aggressive and penetrate the lane. And, you know, he's, he's somebody that I, I, I really need for, for him to pan out, um, and, you know, kind of exceed everyone's expectations. Cause being able to have a dog like Anthony black, um, you know, once he is able to really figure it out, hit his prime, you get a six foot seven point guard um, that that can do what he does on a consistent basis. It's going to be so beautiful uh, to be able to watch in the future. So definitely some things that we were impressed with. Wendell Carter bringing in 13 rebounds was huge. Um, not the greatest shooting day, but man, controlling the board is is where it's at. And how do we not talk about Paulo Bancaro. Paulo Bancaro went absolutely Oof. bananas, man. That dude is looking like he is on a mission to uh, make sure that he's in the conversation for uh, one of the best th- top 10 players in in this league, and he's already making a case for it, man. He was playing bully basketball, and I, I loved every every minute of it uh, what were your thoughts on paulo and talk to me about franz dude i mean paulo just looks athletic like more athletic than last year he looks a little lighter on his feet um more bouncy is the word uh, i'm thinking of but i mean the aggressiveness i love that right off the bat he came into the game he was looking for his shot he was aggressive he ended up taking 24 shots in this game which when i got home and looked at the box score i'm like wait he took 24 shots like that's really aggressive. I don't think we saw Paolo take this many shots last year in many games. Um, but one thing I'll say, too, is the fact that he grabbed 11 rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block, zero turnovers. That's the biggest stat for me because we know Paolo handles the ball a lot. He creates a lot of the offense for us. Zero turnovers. Super impressive. Um, so two big things for me that, that impressed me, the scoring, of course, but the rebounding and the zero turnovers. That, that stood out to me a lot. And you talk about Franz. Franz started kind of slow, fouled trouble early on. The biggest thing, man, Franz hit three three pointers last night. We talked about it so much in all of our episodes heading into the season, throughout uh, training camp, preseason. Like, we need Franz to find that shot, find his rhythm. And guess what? He started a little bit slow last night, but once he found his rhythm, three, four, six last night from three point range. That is going to be crucial for us. He ended the night with 23 points, four rebounds, four assists, and just like Paolo, zero turnovers. So think about that, man. Those guys, Paolo and Franz, had about half the ball in their hands, every possession it feels like. And for them to have zero turnovers, that is really, really impressive. So that was really eye-opening to me. That duo, we know, super young, super talented, getting better game by game. And game one was truly a success for those two guys. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, Jimmy Butler in 26 minutes only scored, you know, three points. They had him on lockdown. There was there was an opportunity for him to be able to breathe. You know, you, you can tell that the Magic defense really, um, you know, frustrated the Miami Heat, frustrated Jimmy Butler that didn't want to talk to anybody out, uh, after the game. Um, so, uh, again, man, we, we talked about how, you know the the defense is really what's is is our calling card, right? And to be able to see that come to life um, is is awesome to see. You know, Jalen Suggs. When when you talk about our first half, you know the game stayed pretty close. Uh, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner, definitely getting into foul trouble early. Um, but the minute that Jalen Suggs comes back into the game, literally within minutes, he he you know scores a quick basket um, by the rim and then shoots a three pointer. Um, there in the corner, and then all of a sudden we're up by 10. So, you know, it, it kind of goes to show you, yeah, we didn't play the greatest first half, but we also weren't at full strength, right? So what would that game have looked like if, you know, we, we did have those players available? You know, it makes me feel or gives me the confidence that it would have been more of a dominant showing throughout the whole entire game um, instead of, you know, just kind of, pressing the gas, you know, in the beginning of the third quarter and then just kind of demolishing them at the end. But, man, it was it was a really fun game. Uh, literally every single player on the Magic, we stomped on the Heat so bad that everybody got minutes. Every single person on the Magic roster outside of our two ways 
um, got to got to see the court, which was was awesome. So um, now struggles with KCP, struggles with Cole Anthony. I know it's just game one. Are you worried? Nah, man, game one. I think we know exactly what you know Cole Anthony can do. We know exactly what KCP can do. Those guys have been in the league for a while. They'll be fine. Um, Cole Anthony just had a rough night, man. 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 5 from three-point range. But I do like the fact that he got three rebounds and six assists. So he found ways to contribute uh, in the game last night. Even though, again, the shot was, was not falling for him, he got involved. He got others involved. And that's what you can ask for. Go out there and find a way to help the team win. KCP, whatever the reasons are, it's a new team. He's still getting adjusted to things. He was kind of sluggish in preseason. That carried over to his first game with us. But guess what, man? Once he sees the ball go in here and there, a couple shots, he'll find that rhythm once again and be just fine. The defense, though, that he, that he brought to the table, my goodness. When we saw KCP with Jalen Suggs, it was that he could not bring the ball up. Like it was how, That's how bad it was in the third quarter. They could not get the ball up to half court without a constant pressure from Jalen Suggs and KCP. And it was beautiful because it led to easy turnovers that led to fast break, that led to easy layups or dunks. So that's just a preview. That's just game one of what this duo is going to look like. It's going to be beautiful to watch, man. 82 games of this team just getting better and better and better. And this duo of Jalen Suggs and, K- and KCP guarding whoever your best players are on a nightly basis. You said it. Jimmy Butler got one basket. You know what that basket was? A fast break um, alley-oop. That's it. After that, he got no easy looks, no easy baskets. And to your point, he left the game, didn't want to talk to the media, nothing like that on game one. Like, who does that? But it goes to show you, that's how easy this Magic defense can frustrate the opponent's best player. It's beautiful to see. Yeah, I mean, Miami already, they already have their own issues. Uh, Jimmy Butler looking for a long-term extension with Miami. Miami possibly looking to to move a different direction outside of Jimmy Butler. So I'm sure, especially on Pat Riley night, this definitely did not help uh, Jimmy's case. But yeah, man, I, I'm not I'm not worried about Cole or KCP. Obviously, not every single player on our roster is gonna, you know, have a, a overall better season than last season. But part of the issue with Cole Anthony is is consistency, right? Uh, we haven't been able to see a whole season from him uh, where he's he's really consistent on the offensive end where it's someone that we can rely on. And, you know, last season he had a lot of bright spots. He also had a lot of challenging spots as well. Um, so I'm hoping that this is just, you know, one game and snaps out of it because when it comes to our second unit, offensively he is somebody that we're going to lean on you know a whole bunch and and kcp man i I am not if you're worried about his shooting uh you know kcp shooters are going to shoot um his three-point shot is is the one thing that i am i'm not worried about at all i need him to snap out of it um hopefully he can find his shot against you know a, a a team like the brooklyn nets that we're not expecting too much from um but defensively you know he was he was all in man and and again uh between him and and Suggs and Gary Harris too man they they were all a, a menace and you know once once you start seeing that when you when you talk about uh you know sending a message and Paolo Bancaro had mentioned it you know sending a message to the rest of the league that you know this we're 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 a team to to fear right like you you have to take us serious because we are a, a a good basketball team. It was fun hearing Paulo Bancaro kind of smiling uh, when he was being interviewed afterwards about how he's he's never played with a team like this, right? Defensively, just getting stop after stop after stop. And as we grow and get better offensively, if we can get our offense, our our offense um, at an elite level like our defense, we're going to be a problem, man. Uh, a lot of teams are going to struggle with our length, with our size, with our versatility. Um, and the magic, from what it looks like, we're moving in the right direction. And what I love the most is that these teams are going to have to deal with us for a long time. Jalen Suggs signs a five-year, $150 million contract extension, fully guaranteed um, in Jeff Weltman fashion, declining year over year uh, with no player or team options. How good does it feel to know that they got it done with Jalen Suggs. They they waited all the way up to the wire, but 
you know, they, they got it done, and Jalen Suggs is going to be here for uh, a good amount of time. Dude, I think you said it best in our, in our group chat. Um, the best part for me is the mental impact that this will have in Jalen Suggs' game, to be honest with you. I think that putting this behind him, he can focus on basketball. He said it himself in a few interviews this week. It was weighing on him a little bit, like what to do with his contract, what's going to happen. Um, now that that's behind him, and we saw him speak afterwards. Actually, he was with uh, Phil on a, on a podcast um, earlier this week, and he said it. If you thought I played hard before, you haven't seen anything. Like, he is ready to fight for this team even more now because he knows, hey, we paid him. We've done right by him and his family. This is gonna. This is life changing, right? It's one hundred and fifty million dollars. It's generational wealth for him and his family, his kids, and he's embracing this man. He loves the team. He loves the culture that we're building. He loves the city of Orlando. He said it. So for him to be here for five years, fully guaranteed, I truly hope, man. I really, really do this. I, I really hope that he's here for the entirety of those five years and more years to come. Coach mostly said this week he is truly the glue of this team. And we've wondered in some group chats and Twitter, who is the glue of the Orlando Magic? Some say it's Cole Anthony. He's always been that guy, right? Representing his players, locker room presence. And Jalen Suggs, in a way, kind of took over and said, you know what? This is my team. Yep. He took that leadership approach. And he's made it you know, known to the crowd. When you go to the games here at the Kia Center, he's the first one to get you pumped up, get you excited. In the locker room, he's been loved by his teammates. He took over, in my mind, that glue guy kind of title away from Cole Anthony, and that's okay. We have two of those guys. I'm fine with that. So it feels good that it's over with. We know we have him for five years here at the very least, hopefully many more to come. But like I said, the impact in my mind that this will have on his game, just knowing that, that is behind him, it's over with. It's going to be crucial for this season for us. And I hope, I really hope that he can just now turn the page, focus on basketball, and have a great, great season, especially a healthy season. Um, but that, those are my thoughts. What about you, man? What was your first reaction when you heard $150 million, five years for Jalen Sucks? Yeah. So when I heard it, I'm like, Ooh, that's, a, that's, that's expensive, man. That's, that's a, that's not a bad bag. Um, but man, uh, I, I absolutely love it for Jalen Suggs. This, this allows for him to, uh, you know, be able to play basketball stress-free and, and just have fun. Uh, I will say that Jalen Suggs' contract would have been so much cheaper if he didn't get, you know, second team all defense. So getting that, getting that title, um, obviously you you pay a, a, a little bit more for having a player like that on your team, and you know it, it couldn't have gone to a better dude. Um, reading comments from from other individuals, um, the only people that have a problem with the money are people outside of Orlando, but they don't, they don't hear the way that he talks about the city. They don't see how his positivity impacts the rest of the team. They don't see, you know, the, the grind that this kid does the, on the defensive end on a day to day basis. They haven't seen the, the growth that we've seen from him from, you know, the season before last season to last season. We're hoping that, you know, he can even take that, you know, whole step, you know, forward. Um, and, and when you take a look, when you take a look at, you know, kind of how everything was, you know, uh, part of the, the awesome thing about, you know, Jalen Suggs and, and Franz Wagner, when we drafted them and, you know, obviously Franz Wagner, uh, you know, he advanced a lot earlier than Jalen Suggs and ultimately is, is the better player. Um, you know, we would have spent that money, you know, if Jalen Suggs, you know, panned out early on you know, regardless, right. They, they just kind of, you know, flip flopped in my eyes. So uh, I'm good with the contract. Love the fact that he's going to be here for a long time. Um, and you know, he's, he's, he's earned it. And it was awesome being able to see if you haven't seen the video of Paulo Bancaro, uh, live recording an interview, finding out that, you know, Jalen Suggs, uh, just did a contract extension. It, it was, it's awesome because everyone is happy for him. Cole Anthony, you know, put something on his social media, Paulo being Carroll being excited, the rest of his teammates being excited for him. Uh, goes to show you how close, again, another example of how close his team is um, and how much they, they really do enjoy and, and have love for one another. So big, big ups for Jalen Suggs. Um, now we just hope that he can he can progress and continue to build on what he's established last season. And for the love of God, I just need him to to continue to be healthy because 
the way that this team is structured, you know, it's not, it's, it's by committee. It's by committee. Paulo Bancaro is obviously the guy that's, that's, you know, our, our anchor, the person that we're going to rely on so much from an offensive standpoint and being our star player. But Paulo can't do it by himself. He's going to need Franz. He's going to need Jalen. He's going to need, you know, the first unit, the second unit, the third string. He's going to need everyone. And it's so, so important that, you know, this team continues to be um, healthy. Unfortunately, the Magic are dealing with a little bit of injury. Jonathan Isaac listed as questionable for um, the game against the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, you know, late in the game, Mo accidentally uh, ran into uh, the bottom portion of Jonathan Isaac, um, and he had like an awkward fall. So hopefully that's not anything too serious. Everything that we've read indicates that he's still expected to play, even with that questionable title. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see how, how that goes, but, um, do you have any concerns with Jonathan Isaac putting on the weight and already, you know, falling into, um, you know, a, 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 a potential injury? Nah, I mean, the, the way that it happened was a, a freak situation, right? Which unfortunately happens a lot to J.I. It's, it's like, what are the odds? So I, I, the way that I saw it from the, from the, uh, from my seats was that it seems like Mo got pushed and then he kind of ran into J.I. in a weird way. And then J.I. fell in an awkward fashion. So his hip, I guess, ultimately is what was sore. So thankfully it wasn't an ankle. It wasn't a knee, nothing like that. So I do hope that he plays, man, it's opening night here. Now our home opener tonight against the Nets. It will be amazing to have him in uniform, get introduced to the crowd. The crowd loves J.I. here in Orlando. So I hope that we don't see him with a suit on. I want to see him with his, you know, uh, uniform on uh, tonight against the Nets. Um, So I think he'll be fine. Just a a freak situation there. Um, But you you talked about Jalen Suggs staying healthy. That goes to J.I. as well, man. Because I think J.I. and Suggs, when those two are healthy and contributing for our team on a nightly basis, this team defensively is on another level. So you said it about Suggs. I definitely follow it up and say J.I. is another crucial member of the defensive unit being solid, he's got to stay healthy for us, though. So hopefully he'll be fine. Uh, we do have a back-to-back, though. We're playing Memphis tomorrow night, so not sure if they just play it safe and they maybe shut him down tonight, play him tomorrow. We'll see what happens, but I do hope he plays tonight. It'll be amazing to have him there um, for opening night here for us in Orlando. Yeah, we got tonight versus Brooklyn, tomorrow against Memphis, Monday, Indiana, followed by Wednesday against the Chicago Bulls. Um, let, let's wrap this up with your predictions. Uh, not a bad way to start the season. I like the teams that we're playing against early on. Um, and I think the magic have a really good chance of, of starting the season five and zero. Um, so those are my predictions. I, I, I think Brooklyn is going to be a good challenge. It's, it's the first home gaming. And one of the things that the magic need to do is take care of the teams that you need to take care of. Um, especially the ones on paper. We we can't take the Brooklyn Nets lightly. This is a team that on paper we should beat, and this should be a team that we show our dominance. Um, I don't want this to be a game where, you know, it's 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 a close back and forth. I want us to be able to show our defensive dominance early on, and I want to be able to see our first home game. Uh, we bring that same level of intensity that we brought against the Miami Heat, against the Brooklyn Nets. But Brooklyn, Memphis, Indiana, Chicago, what are your predictions? So wait, did I hear you correctly? You got them going 4-0, and so that makes us 5-0 and to start the season? 4-0. Four, four, four and oh. Two games at home, Sheesh. two games away, 5-0. and oh. um, Sheesh. That, that's why Indiana might be the team that gives us the most challenge. Uh, Chicago, they got Lonzo Ball back. Uh, Vooch just had a birthday, so hopefully his uh, <laughs> birthday charm kind of rubs away before you know we take them on on Wednesday. But I got the Magic going five and zero, first five games of the season. I love it. So for me, I, I definitely got us winning tonight against Brooklyn. I think we'll we'll have a fun game. Um, I think it'll be a follow up what we saw in Miami. Hopefully that's the case, and we can celebrate our first game, home game of the season here and, and get off to a, a huge start. And win. I get an easy win because we do play Saturday night against Memphis. Um, for some reason, I see the Memphis game as maybe the most difficult one. They have a job back. They have a fun young team. Um, 
let's see. I got us going three and one. I'm just alternating between we losing to Memphis or losing to Indiana. One of those two, I think we, we find a way to lose. But still, by the end of the week, I see us going four and one by the time that we record our next episode, which would be amazing because we know our, our schedule is a little tough. So if we can be four and one to start the season, that would be ideal. But I hope you're right. And we are back here recording next week with a five and zero record. Yeah, I mean, listen, the matchup that I'm looking forward to the most is going to be Suggs against Ja. I think that that's going to be a box office. I think that's something that we're going to be able to see, um, you know, just how just how well our defense can really um, exploit some of these teams. So uh, I, that's the game that I have circled. I, I have confidence in my guys. 5-0, and book it, and we'll see where the uh, magic end up taking uh this this intro of the season um and that that's a wrap for us man really quick episode today magic get the first game under their belts don't forget we just uh you released our new patreon uh, with some awesome benefits join us on our discord group chat we're having exclusive podcast articles and additional video content uh, discounts for magic home games uh, exclusive giveaways and so much more make sure to check that out um, also, after every single Magic basketball game, we got our our uh, spaces guys um, opening up uh, open mic spaces on on the X platform. So definitely join that. We got BJ dropping up articles, Angel doing the same thing. So a lot of contact coming your way. Steven will be dropping another episode really soon. So definitely make sure that you check us out on our website, OrlandoMagicHQ.com, and be able to check out all the different content that we have going. That's a wrap for us. Show is presented by Bet Online, and we'll catch you guys next week. For all the latest magic news and updates, visit OrlandoMagicHQ.com. And follow us on Instagram at Orlando Magic HQ and on Twitter at OMagicHQ. Also, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a five-star review on your favorite listening platform.